Hey there everybody, it's Cheyenne, aka Arsenic Cupcakes. Um, first off, I'd like to apologize for my absence for the last few months. I just graduated from college, um, and the last couple months were a lot of finals and stuff, and I didn't have the bandwidth to do anything that was not school or sleep, and there was very little of that sleep stuff. But, but now that I'm back to normal a little bit, and until I I'm able to find a grown-up girl job. Um, I should have time to do these a lot more regularly. So. so this is a video that I've owed a couple of people, particularly on my Tumblr, for a long, long time. Today we're going to talk about hand embroidery a little bit. So for those of you that don't know, from I talk about a lot on Tumblr, one of my biggest hobbies is hand embroidery. It's pretty much right up there alongside reading and crying about Disney movies. So I've managed to get pretty good at it. I've been doing it for five or six years now and it's a really fun hobby. I'd like to be able to kind of share it with all of you guys because it's really fun. It's a really great way to spruce up sort of plain pieces of your wardrobe and it's also very very economical all you need is some thread a hoop some fabric and you can use clothes you have lying around that aren't that interesting to you and you can get the thread for around 30 cents a, a skein or skein i've never understood how you pronounce that so let's get started okay so the first thing you're going to need is a hoop so this is my hoop. It is a plastic hoop. It's a seven inch. That's a good kind of comfortable size for me, just in terms of how I hold it in my hands. Um, I can fit it into my purse most of the time. But you need a hoop. You can get one pretty cheaply at Joann's or Michael's or someplace like that. This one is from the starter kit that I bought in high school. It was by Sublime Stitching. I'll put a link to them down in the box. They have some really great starter kits and they have some really cool patterns. They're great. Um, but yeah, you need, you need one of these, these guys. And your next thing that you're going to need is your fabric. Generally speaking, you want to use something that's large enough that you can fit your hoop around it comfortably. Um, so most pieces of clothing and stuff are fun, but if you're going to do it on a really small scrap, you're going to need a really little hoop. I don't feel like it's worth it, personally, but people have different views about this. Um, you're going to want a fabric that's kind of sturdy. I generally use cotton. I don't like anything anything that's stretchy. When you put a needle into it, it's going to kind of stretch. It's gonna, you can put stabilizer under it, but it's a big pain in the butt. To start, I'd say just use a good cotton. This is extra cotton broadcloth I had from when I made my coffin dress a while back. And you're going to need pattern to start on. I already went ahead and put my pattern on this. So I'm going to try and hold this up so that maybe you can see this. I don't know if you can, but it's an eyeball with bat wings on it. It's very, very cute. When it comes to picking out a pattern, you're going to want something that doesn't have a ton of, it can have detail, but you don't want a lot of little lines because you'll hate yourself. Um, you're probably going to want something where everything's kind of closed in, or at least I tend to. Things that are relatively simple, especially to start, coloring book pages are great. They're a great, great resource. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do this, a way you can transfer it if you buy patterns from a commercial source like Sublime Stitching, you can get them where they're on transfer paper, which is handy. Um, but I usually just hold it up to my laptop screen and use that like a light box with a picture on the back and then I use a washable pen so that you don't want to use pencil because you will, you will rub it off with your hands. And also always make sure that you wash your hands before you start because otherwise by the time you're done will have a ring of hand dirt around the hoop and it's just not not cute so now we're going to put this into the hoop so the hoop as you might have noticed from me flailing around it's two parts this part with the screw on the top this is the front or the top i guess 
and this part here is the bottom and not all hoops have this but mine does and a good hoop should have this at the bottom you'll notice there's a little bit of a rim on the edge there I don't know if you can see it but um, that rim needs to go on the bottom because it'll keep your fabric from moving around too much and they kind of lock together really nicely so to get your fabric in here you're gonna take it and put it on this bottom hoop so that it's in the center comfortably. Okay, that'll work. And you're gonna take your top hoop and place it over the top and kind of sandwich the fabric between the two hoops. And now you're going to tighten this little screw here until the fabric is very tight and sort of stretched out underneath of it. This will keep it from stretching with your needle when you put a needle through it, which is not fun. Trust me, I learned the hard way. Never try to embroider on a cardigan. It's, it's not worth it. Embroider on something else, make patches, and then put those on a cardigan. Trust me. Trust me on this one. Also never try to embroider on leather or suede because your fingers will hate you. It's not worth it. I don't care how cute the thing is. So now I've got it all kind of secured in there. You can see that it's very tight. It's very taut in there. And I feel like the hoop is secure, so I'm gonna pick out my colors. Keep, I keep on my thread in a Rosie the Riveter kin because I do. I don't care. Shut up. You're not my real dad. And you're going to pick your colors. What I usually do is I will pick a lighter color and then one that's just slightly darker than it because I like um, sort of a slightly darker outline color. But that could just be me. I so I'm gonna thread my needle with my first selection and then we'll get started, okay? All right, so got my hoop ball ready. I've got my needle all threaded. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with this wing up here, a little bat wing, and the physiology of that notwithstanding. And I'm gonna do the outline first. So I've got my dark purple all threaded up. I cut off a piece of the whole skein, all, you know, six pieces of thread or however many it is. And I'm gonna start with what's called a split stitch. And this stitch, any lines you're doing, it's pretty much gonna be your bread and butter. So let's, let's get started. So I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna pull it up through the bottom of the fabric, like that, pull it up. And I don't knot my thread, I just leave a little bit at the back, like this. If you feel more comfortable with a knot, that's fine. I just feel like it's a little redundant and it gets annoying when you're using 3,000 threads to knot everything. Especially because you're generally gonna want to cut off all those threads. So I'm gonna go back in. I'm about an eighth of an inch, very small. The key to getting your embroidery to look really nice and really clean is you have to make really, really tiny stitches. A lot of the time when you first start out, um, it's tempting to make larger stitches, especially if it's a straight line. You're like, oh, hold on, notice it does not look as good as very, very small stitches will make everything look more polished. Just tiny, tiny, no more than like an eighth of an inch per stitch. Okay, so I've got my first stitch in there, that little tiny thing. And the reason it's called a split stitch is I'm gonna take my needle again and I'm gonna put it in so that it comes in in the middle of that first stitch I made. Can you see that? Make sure that that first stitch is anchored. And I'm gonna pull it through. Make sure that so it looks sort of like that. I'm going to do a couple for you so you can see what they look like at the end.
Okay, so I have finished the whole little wing in satin stitch. You can see all of those little stitches in there. It's kind of blurring. But it's almost sort of a braided look. It's very cute, I think. So now we just have all the lines done. What if we want to fill this in with another color? I probably should not have decided to make the wings purple on lavender fabric before I did this, but besides that point. So what we're gonna do next is a stitch called the satin stitch. And to do the satin stitch, we're gonna get our thread we're gonna use. So this is my lighter purple that I picked out earlier. And you're, you would think you just use the whole thing like we did with the split stitch, but if you do that, this is gonna roll and it's not gonna look good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take in the edge of this and split it down the middle. So we split it into threes. Sometimes it will be kind of stubborn about it because they're obviously kind of woven together on purpose. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm gonna stick it into the fabric under like I did for the split stitch. And I'm gonna pull it up again until there's just a little tail on the end. And I always like to do this straight up and down. Some people will do it sort of in this case I would guess do it diagonally to sort of go with the flow of whatever the thing is. I feel like straight up and down looks the best. So I'm gonna figure out what the straight up and down point would be for this. And I'm gonna put my thread in at the top, sort of the the fullness between and pull it tight. And see it creates that kind of line. And I'm gonna take my needle again and I'm gonna take it from where I just put the needle, so up at the top here. Because a lot of the time, if you try and go back through here, you're not gonna be able to get them close enough together. So you're gonna go up here, and you're gonna pull your needle through, and you're gonna pull it and make that nice and taut and you're gonna put it next to where you started with your needle. So it's, it's just kind of a back and forth. And you wanna get these as close together as you can. So again, it's a back and forth motion. You go from one end to the other, and then you go from that other end back to the first. I've finished this little section of the satin stitch. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because it'll take 300 hours. Okay. And it sort of catches the light there. It looks very nice when it's all done. And I'm not gonna finish this one right now because that would take me forever, but I'll take out a couple that I've done just sort of so you can see how they look. So this is Gloomy Bear. Um, hopefully you can see a little bit of that, the way the satin stitch catches the light. And this is a great one. This was one of my favorites I did. It's, I took the Barbie logo and I turned it into the Bride of Frankenstein because I like the Bride of Frankenstein and you know when they when they're all done and they're finished they can look really nice um, you can put them in cheap wood hoops like this to mount them um, for sort of display purposes I haven't hung them all up in my room yet you can cut them up and turn them into patches um, you can also embroider directly on a piece of clothing I tend to make dresses specifically to embroider on um, I'll put some stitch guides in the description box because I'm sure that watching me do the stitches probably didn't illustrate too much. I don't know. Um, but this is more sort of meant to be a startup tips and tricks kind of video. And in the spirit of tips and tricks, 
Um, never go anywhere without your scissors if you're working on something. You don't want to get a pair that's any longer than four inches because if you do, they will take them away from you on the air on in the airport. And this guy is also really handy. He is a thread separator. He um, all these little holes you can put thread into them so that your thread, if you're you know using it to travel, I like to do my embroidery on the train and stuff. It doesn't just turn into this in your purse because that can be really frustrating. Um, so yeah, definitely get started. Um, I'd love to see anything you guys do, you know, definitely send pictures of, of things my way. Either, you know, send me a message on here or on my Tumblr, arseniccupcakes.tumblr.com. I'm on Tumblr a lot more, but I'm going to work really hard to try and keep up this YouTube channel a little more so if there's anything at all you want to hear me talk about you have any questions about embroidery stuff or sewing or whatever feel free leave a question leave a topic idea in the comments down there and I will do my best to get to everything I you guys have been really great and I feel like I kind of I owe you guys my best now that I'm out of college and I can breathe. Um, so yeah, you know, leave your comments down there. Down there for me. Alright, awesome. We'll see you guys later. Bye!